Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the BNS channel. My name is Edie Ann and I'm doing a bariatric surgery update today. Let's see, it's been 68 days since my surgery that I had on May 4th of 2018 this year. Um, I have had some changes. I've had some things that kind of came up that I was not aware of and it has nothing to do with the surgery, like my heart issues. Um, I, my, my highest weight was 254.4 or something like that, so 255. Um, my surgery weight was 236. My current weight is 188. So that's pretty cool. I am very uh, excited about that. I still have a mentality that I'm 236. I don't know that I didn't, I don't know that I got in my head enough or long enough when I was 255, but I'll tell you the difference between 250 and 230 is huge when it comes to doing things, being able to do things. Um, we have a new, they paved our road. Is that not a big difference? It's huge and I love it. Um, so mentally wise, like headspace wise, um, I still feel like I'm 236, maybe 250, but actually not because at 250, there was a lot of things that I could not do. Um, that I was able to do at 2.30. So hopefully that makes sense to anybody that's been in the same position. Um, I have been able to lower my thyroid medicine. Um, I've gone from diabetes to pre-diabetes. I, um, I have no more GERD, but I'm still on my Nexium. And with my Nexium, I didn't have GERD. However, there were times that I could still have acid reflux even on Nexium because it was so bad. Um, I have barely any hip pain at all. I did have some while I was in California um, the day that we went to Disney because we walked 12 miles. So my body was like, what is this? <laughs> what are you doing? Um, and my hip was hurting. So, but since I've been home and I haven't been exercising that much, it's not hurting nearly as much as it was. Um, the tingling that I was feeling in my fingers is gone. Um, so I, I ha must have had a pinched nerve in my neck that was exacerbated by having a lot more weight on my neck um, because I've definitely lost a lot of weight here and in my face and in my boobs. Um, my back doesn't hurt as much because I've lost weight in my boobs. Um, but I've also been going to the chiropractor, so that's been helping. I also, let's see, I was able, able to go on some rides at Disney because of my weight loss. So that was pretty awesome because there were times that I just really didn't fit comfortably in any of the seats. Um, the plane ride was much more comfortable because I was able to sit better in the seats. My seatbelt was not all the way to the end. I was at the point where I would have had to ask for an extender, but I refused to do that. And so there were times that I probably didn't buckle my belt. It was, you know, I didn't realize how sick I was, you guys. I was sick. I was not well. I had a lot of things that were going wrong. My heart was having a hard time. My heart's still having a hard time, but at least we know what it is now and I'm being medicated for it. So I'm not sure if I've said this in a previous video, but I have talked to my cardiologist and my sleep doctor and they have determined that it is highly potential that, or, or highly likely that my AFib is being caused by my central sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea is different than obstructive sleep apnea. 
Obstructive, obstructive is when you snore and when you have like a thick neck and um, maybe your tongue goes back. There's a lot of different reasons for obstructive. Overweight is one of them. Um, but I have central and central means that my brain tells my lungs to stop breathing. Um, or it doesn't tell my lungs to breathe, whichever way you want to look at it. But it also depends on what's happening. So when I go into tachycardia and my heart, heart rate is high, my brain says to stop breathing because there's too much blood being circulated through my veins. Well, then when the blood, uh, when the oxygen drops, um, the heart rate goes up to increase the oxygen again. So it's kind of this cycle of sameness that's happening. Um, between my brain and my heart and so with the medicine it, it helps to find that happy medium and I am now regulated on that medicine before it was still very off and on I wasn't taking it I was taking it I wasn't taking it I was taking it and so it would just was very difficult on my body I now take it regularly um, because my heart rate and my blood pressure is stable um, some of that could be from the surgery but not caused by the surgery. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so, and they've also added a blood thinner to my prescription repertoire. So I used to take seven prescriptions a day and now I'm down to four. I was at three, but now they added the blood thinner. So now I'm back to four. Nexium will go away eventually, hopefully. And the levothyroxin for my uh, thyroid will go down. It's continuing to go down. My propranolol is helping my heart, my migraines, and my tremors. It's actually targeting all three of those things that I've had. Um, and then, of course, my blood thinner. So things are progressively getting better. My sleep doctor did encourage me by saying that I could potentially be off of the sleep, the CPAP, but that they're going to have to redo sleep studies and that sort of thing as time progresses and as I continue to lose weight. So hopefully I'll be off the CPAP someday. Um, I probably will eliminate my obstructive sleep apnea, which will be nice, but I still have central, so whatever. Um, what else is happening? So I've done really well. I've lost, gosh, on my waist, I've lost about... I think I was at 54 inches and now I'm at 45 inches on my waist um, as well as my breasts so both have gone down what nine inches that's a lot um, hips have down like five or six um, yeah so everything is progressing I'm exercising more now which is better um, I'm going to be getting back on the treadmill. Hopefully I can start doing that either tonight or tomorrow. Right now I'm heading to the dentist um, for a regular cleaning. And yeah, so there's a lot of good things that are happening and I'm pretty thrilled with the results. I feel like it's happening very quickly because um, I'm down, what, 66 pounds? 66 can't do the math in my head, but over 60 pounds I've lost in three months, May, June, July, three months. So that's pretty darn good. Um, as far as eating, I eat between a quarter of a cup to half a cup per meal. Um, and then I have some liquid snacks or some sugar-free snacks in between, not often, but I find that I do that more at night. So as long as I'm choosing the right snacks, I'm okay. Um, and I usually do like a sugar-free fudgesicle or a sugar-free popsicle. Those are usually what my snacks are. Um, or sugar-free jello or pudding. Um, I'm still doing protein and fiber mainly. Um, I increase, or not increase, but I have been trying different foods to reintroduce them back. I know that I cannot have greasy foods at all. It makes me so sick. Um, not to the point of vomiting, but I just feel not well, not good. Um, so greasy, fatty foods are out of the question. Anything fried can't happen. 
Um, I do a lot of eggs, chicken, turkey. I do some ground turkey, ground beef kind of thing. Um, typically I do ground buffalo beef um, rather than just regular hamburg. Um, mashed potatoes are still my favorite because they're just delicious. But my, I am learning to get a baked potato and mash it myself. That way the added ingredients are not in there like butter or milk or whatever else they tend to add to mashed potatoes. So that has, um, my food intake has been good. As far as trying new stuff, I feel like I might have a gluten intolerance because I have Kashi cereal, which was approved um, because of the high protein, but I tend to have like stomach pain or bloating, not pain so much as bloating um, and gassiness after I eat them. So I try not to eat that too much. Um, and I try to just stay away from bread since it was one of my weaknesses before. Um, but if I do bread, it's a whole grain bread rather than whole wheat. Um, which is just better anyway. I do a lot of fruit. I do like fruit. Uh, mangoes are my go-tos. Um, so that's where I'm getting some of my fiber. Um, also getting some of my fiber from green vegetables. Lettuce is not as, um, I don't know, I like doing salad, but it's got to be iceberg lettuce. It can't be like real leafy lettuce because it tends to get stuck. And I know people don't understand what that means, but it like, it seems to kind of get just stuck in my esophagus for some reason. And I don't know why. Um, I know that I need to drink more water. That's always been a problem with me, but I'm doing better. So like I've got my Propel water with my Crystal Light sugar-free liquid enhancer. Um, so I tend to do that a lot more. Um, what else? Just a lot of good stuff is happening and I'm really pleased with the results. I've got no qualms whatsoever. It really is all up here. And what I tell myself is good and bad. Um, right and wrong and that probably to me is the biggest part of this journey is the whole mindset shift in understanding that what I'm doing for my body it really is just a reset and a do-over you know it's like me having a divorce with my old body and being remarried to my new body kind of what it's like so um, that's the update and I will continue to update you. I don't do it all that often just because it's, I don't want to have bore you with the same old, same old stuff. Um, but once a month is probably not so bad. And uh, if I get any new news, I like to share it with you guys. So thanks guys for all of the comments and the supportive messages that you've sent me. And I went to Sensi Family Reunion this past week. And one of the things that I really, it warmed my heart a lot was that People were actually coming up to me not just or not even about Sensi at times it was about my weight loss journey and how they've been through it and how I've inspired them so thank you guys for that because it just makes me feel like what I'm doing is worth it you know so thanks guys for joining me have an amazing day make it an amazing day for somebody else and go pay it forward with kindness because it just feels good <laughs>